Hi YouTube, Mickey here. Um, I know it's been a long time since I have done a YouTube video, or our family has done a YouTube video, and that is because we have been kind of preoccupied with, as you can tell by the title of this video, my breast cancer pre-diagnosis. Boobies don't fail me now. That is about the extent of my thinking right now is boobies don't fail me now. I'm going to be going over a lot of my symptoms and the process from meeting with my doctor all the way up to where I'm at right now in the pre-diagnosis stages for breast cancer. For me, I have a strong family history of cancers, not just breast cancer, but cancers in general. Um, and so, I wasn't getting my yearly mammograms. I'm not 35 yet, I'm only 31. So I haven't, you know, been in that routine of getting mammograms. However, I have been in the routine since about the age of 20 in doing self exams on myself. In May, I started to just kind of feel different. And when I say different, I mean I was having, you know, between my shoulder blades and my back, I was having throbbing back pain and I thought it was my bed. So I ended up, um, my husband and I ended up getting a different bed and the back pain persisted. So we went back to our old bed. Um, we even went as far as getting rid of the frame. It's just literally box spring and mattress on the floor. So it's firmer and I figured that would help. It didn't. And then I also started to feel a sensation of throbbing in both of my breasts. And when I say throbbing, you might kind of be familiar with that feeling already because a lot of times when females go through their menstrual cycle, you will feel a change in your breasts. And it can sometimes consist of a, you know, real faint throbbing. Um, I was noticing this throbbing even between cycles. It was a constant. Um, on top of that, I in my left armpit, I would get almost like a sharp, I, I still get a sharp, um, what feels like a bee stinging in my armpit. So, you know, I'm having all of these uncomfortable, just, I feel slightly unwell. In experiencing those symptoms, I figure I would just treat it symptomatically as I did, you know, with my bed trying to figure out what was causing the back pain. Um, I would take ibuprofen for the throbbing in my breasts and the pain in my armpit. The problem with it is, is that n none of these pains were ever like clockwork. I never knew when it was going to happen. Um, it was just really spontaneous. So I tried to treat it symptomatically and when I realized that I wasn't getting very far, I decided, okay, well these symptoms um, sounded familiar to me when my uh, grandmother on my mom's side and my aunt on my dad's side were diagnosed with breast cancer. Unfortunately, they were both diagnosed with a later stage breast cancer. My grandmother on my mother's side passed away, um, it metastasized. And then my aunt actually is a survivor of breast cancer. So that, you know, is wonderful news. Um, but I decided to do a self breast exam. And so I was laying in bed one night and I decided, you know, just to kind of feel around a little bit. And when I did, I discovered a lump in my right breast. It was on the outside of my right breast and it was very distinct. It's nothing I've ever felt before. Um, it wasn't squishy, it was hard. It almost felt like, I wanna say like the backside of an almond. Um, it didn't move, it wasn't painful, um, but immediately I think my thought process was, oh crap, here we go. Um, towards the beginning of May, I had already made a doctor's appointment to do um, a women's wellness exam, which TMI here, but it's usually, you know, your pap smear, um, lab work, and, you know, things like that. Just women things. Woman things. 
So I already had that doctor's appointment in place for June 3rd and that was supposed to be at 10 o'clock in the morning um, and this was late May that I found out that I had this lump. So you know I'm like okay well I already have a doctor's appointment scheduled, I feel the lump, I'll just wait until my appointment and I'll you know tell my doctor about it. So June 3rd rolls around and I go to my doctor. Um, it was at 10 o'clock in the morning. I go to my doctor's appointment and you know at this point um, I didn't get my pap smear or anything like that. It was more just the lab the lab work which you know they draw your blood and they make sure that you're healthy as far as your cholesterol and your white blood cells, red blood cells, all that other stuff. Um, after sh they draw my blood um, the doctor asked me you know is there anything anything that you've been experiencing you know how are you doing health wise and I told her I said well these are the symptoms I've been having you know it's the back pain throbbing in both breasts the bee sting like feeling in my armpit um, and then when I did a self-evaluation I actually discovered a lump in my right breast and she said okay um, she ended up feeling the lump. Um, she had me sit up straight and I put my arm above my head, showed her where the lump was, and it's actually right here. Um, and she felt it and she said, I'll be damned, that is a lump. And I told her, you know, my mother has uh, fibrocystic breasts, which are just lumpy breasts basically, um, but I never have. I, this, my breasts have never had lumps like this before like you know you can feel your milk ducts and all that stuff when you're doing your breast exams but this was different this just came out of nowhere it it happened just probably about 15 days after I started feeling these symptoms is when I discovered the lump so um, she told me she said that you know that is not a normal lump that the feeling of it it's hard it feels like a mass a solid mass so she wants me to go in for a mammogram and ultrasound of my right breast um, so they scheduled that and they scheduled that for June 9th so six days later um, was my appointment for my mammogram and ultrasound Now, I went in at two o'clock in the afternoon, and um, at this point, I'm okay, mentally. I'm perfectly fine. Um, I am a little bit worried, but I don't know anything, so what's the point in stressing, right? So I walk in, and the place was amazing. So I go to the imaging center, and I walk in, and they have me fill out all this paperwork, and I'm waiting, I probably waited about 30 minutes and the doctor comes out and calls my name. So there's a front waiting room and then when they take you to the back, at least at this place, um, they have you change your, your bras off, your top is off. The only thing you can remain in is your shorts or whatever you're wearing on your lower half of your body. So they have me undress the upper half of my body and um, they hand me this pink robe and it's a super soft plush pink robe it was really cute um, I put it on and then they have a separate waiting room in the back so um, once you have your robe on they obviously don't want you to go out into the front waiting area where all the husbands and kids are they want you you know because you have nothing on they're gonna put you in the back waiting room she calls me back at this point mentally I'm still fine I'm not nervous um, I go back and they're just doing a mammogram on my right breast and I believe it's called a diagnostic mammogram um, when they are targeting a certain concern so I walk in and there's this huge machine and it's so intimidating because it has these two plates like this and she basically lifts your boob puts it on the bottom plate and then proceeds to lowering the top plate on top of your boob and she squishes and squishes and squishes and the whole meantime she's pulling your boob into the machine and so you feel stretching like up here and underneath in your rib cage and it was just awkward I wouldn't say it was painful for me but it was definitely not the most comfortable thing I've ever experienced um, so she proceeds she squished my boob in between these little things and 
It's awkward because above the top plate, there's the shield that kind of goes like this and it's a clear plastic shield. And the way she had me positioned, I was turned and my face was like plastered up against the shield. And I'm like, I'm like this and my boobs in the thing. And it was just uncomfortable. It was so embarrassing. Um, I, I didn't like it, but had to be done. So she's taking pictures of my right boob and she's like, okay, well, I don't see anything. Um, go ahead and wait in the back room and we'll let you know where we're gonna go from here. And I knew at this point, I knew that my doctor had already put in for an ultrasound. So I knew that they were gonna do an ultrasound on my right breast on the actual lump. So they come back and she's like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the ultrasound because you have very dense breasts. And the problem with dense breasts on a mammogram is that basically it's like looking for a snowball in a snowstorm. Your boob on the image comes up white and cancer or tumors show on images white. Um, they tend to cling to areas that provide them with significant blood flow. So because I have dense breasts, which just means instead of them being majority fatty, they are majority, I don't know, muscle or I, I don't even know, but I have dense boobs. So they take me back to the ultrasound room and um, it was funny because when I walked into the ultrasound room, I have my pink fluffy robe on and I walk into this room and the lights are dimmed and there's this, you know, this medical bed and this ultrasound machine. And I looked at the lady and I said, so when am I getting my massage? She's like, I assure you, the only massage you're getting is on your boob. And so I go in and I lay down and she has me put my right arm above my head like this and I'm laying on my back and she has me point out where the lump is. And so I show her where the lump is, she feels it, and she takes this marker and she marks, you know, the points of where she can feel. And then she gets out this warm gel and she puts the gel on the, on the little the handheld thing and then she puts it on my boob and she's trying to find the lump. And the image, I could see the image the whole time. Um, think of like when you get an ultrasound when you're pregnant and you're trying to view the baby, it's the same concept, it's just they're looking for a lump. I imagine it's probably different imaging, but it's the same process. She um, finds the lump and she just, she's like pushing and she's, you know, she's asking me, she goes, does it hurt? And I said, no, it doesn't hurt, but I can feel that you're on top of it. It's like, I mean, it's hard to explain the feeling. There's solid mass in your skin and she's pushing on it. So you can feel the pressure. It doesn't hurt, but I knew that she was right on top of it. And she said, okay, so it doesn't hurt. And I said, no. So she's pushing and she's, you know, moving this thing around an awful lot and I'm like okay I'm keeping to myself but at this point I look over and I can see the monitor and on the monitor there's like a oval um, the rest all of my breast tissue is like a light gray almost like staticky looking right well then there's a circle probably about on the screen it looked huge but I'm pretty sure it microscopes it like micros my, I don't know makes it look bigger so there's this oval and it's black, solid black. And I'm like, that's it. That's the lump. That's what I've been feeling inside my boob. And you know, she's moving it around. And then I noticed that there is a second lump because it's black. It's smaller, but it's black. And I'm thinking, okay, in my head, I'm like, that can't be good because it doesn't look like it's filled with fluid from what I can see. And of course I'm not a professional by any means, but you know, it's not filled with fluid and it's, it looks to be solid. I mean, it's completely black and she's looking at it probably about 10, 15 minutes. And then finally she's like, okay, I am going to um, go get the doctor and me and the doctor are going to look this over and we're going to go from there. And at that moment, I had a mini panic. I just, you know, you think to yourself that you're just going to lay down for this ultrasound and you're like, okay, they're going to see nothing or they're going to tell me it's just, you know, a swollen lymph node or it's just a cyst. You're fine. Go home. When they say they're gonna go get the doctor and have the doctor view it, you at that point, at least I did, 
felt, okay, this is more than just a swollen lymph node or a cyst. So panic starts to set in. I had like a mini panic attack. So the doctor and the nurse walk in or the, I don't, the imaging lady, I, I don't know what they're called, radiologist or whatever, but they walk in and the doctor crosses his arms and he's sitting up against the, the table across from the image machine and she proceeds to put more gel on and she finds the lump again and she shows him and, and he's looking, you know, really intensely at the screen. And then um, the nurse says, she says it doesn't hurt. And he kind of nods and she's like, I'm trying to make it look like a lymph node and I can't. And in my mind, I'm going, oh crap. And I understand why she's trying to make it look like a lymph node. Because if she can make it look like a lymph node, it's a lymph node. But she couldn't. And the doctor said, okay, he's like, pause that frame. And she pauses it and he looks and he goes, okay, you have a lump here. And then there's this little canal like thing that is also black. And then you have a smaller lump that's underneath it. And I'm like, okay, I can see that. What is it? You know, and I'm totally expecting at the ultrasound appointment to have them say, you have cancer, you don't have cancer. It's not how it works. So he says, okay, you do have very dense breasts. I do see the lumps on the ultrasound. I do not feel comfortable sending you home without further testing. Okay, I understand that. So where do we go from here? He proceeds to tell me that he, you know, that technically the mammogram and ultrasound, they have to label it as unconclusive because they can see the lump on the ultrasound, but they can't see it on the mammogram. And he doesn't quite know what it is. It doesn't have the typical markers of breast cancer, which normally, you know, a cyst, a benign cyst, which is non-cancerous, will be an oval, excuse me, or a circle with a distinct edge. With breast cancer, typically it likes to spider out because it's trying to attach to blood supplies. <clears throat> so it spiders on the outside edges of it. Well, the lump itself wasn't spidering. However, the canal between it looked to be. So he says, we are going to schedule you for a, an MRI bilateral, um, which is really good at imaging dense breasts. It's it can pick up cancerous, um, not cells, that's the PET scan, um, cancerous tumors within your midsection. So I'm like, okay, so they schedule me for my um, bilateral MRI. And when you hear bilateral, it just means both breasts, um, it, both basically. So they're doing an MRI of both my left and my right boob. At this point, when I leave, this is when mentally I started to go spiral downwards. This can't be happening, I'm only 31 years old. You know, all the worst case scenario things keep going through your head because when I left my appointment, I was still in the unknown. And I think that's the worst part because I hadn't been told that it wasn't breast cancer and I hadn't been told that it was. I think the worst part about the entire pre-diagnosis process is the waiting and the not knowing. Um, so they scheduled me for my MRI bilateral on June 26th. So probably about two weeks later, um, I go in for my MRI. It was eight o'clock in the morning. Aztec Radiology is where I went. So I check in and they call me back. Well, it, <laughs> funny story. Okay, so my mom and my two sons are with me for the MRI process. The other two, three appoint, two appointments that I went to, I was by myself. Um, but for the MRI, my mother and my two sons were with me who are 13 and 11. So um, for those of you that do not know my mother, she is persistent to say the least. She is determined to do what she wants to do regardless of what people say. That's just my mom. So they call me back 
to get my MRI done and my mom looks at the doctor and she's like well can me and the boys come back too she's like I, I want to be a part of this process and he's like well typically we don't allow family back there we have the front waiting room he's like however if you're that hell-bent on being back there we do have a waiting room in the back and I will let you and your grandkids sit there um, as long as you behave right keyword behave being said to my mother so I go back and I put on um, again they let you leave your lower half clothes on you just have to put on a at this time it's a hospital gown and Typically when you go in for an MRI, they will do a contrast dye, which is inserted via IV. Um, so I go in, I change, I put on my hospital gown, I go back out um, into the prep room, and they put an IV in my left arm. Um, the contrast dye is not hooked up to it yet, it's just the IV port. Um, but So they insert that, which was a fine, they did really well. And then they send me back to the actual MRI machine. And it is, as you've seen it in the movies, it's this big, huge circle and looks intimidating, right? And for those of you that are claustrophobic, an MRI is going to suck ass. It just really is. It's going to suck complete ass because by the time they insert you into the machine, you only have like two inches between your back and the top of the MRI machine. So they bring me back to this room and there's a long table and they have like one of those um, uh, massage therapy like things that you put your face in so that you can lay face down without impeding your breathing. So they have one of those and then they have this area where they elevate your feet and they're like okay there's these two holes in the table and they tell you to dangle your boobs in these two holes so you're laying face down and your boobs are kind of hanging down like this into this like hole, these two holes. And then your face is inside the massage therapy thing. And then they elevate your feet and at this point they hook up the actual contrast to the IV, however they do not inject it yet. They wait until the last like 10 minutes of my images to inject it. Um, so I have the IV hooked up, I'm laying on the bed, my hands, my arms are completely extended out like this and they put on my right hand the monitor for all your vitals, it's a little finger thing that they put on and to check your heartbeat, your blood pressure, all that stuff. And then in my left hand he hands me what felt like a grenade, mind you I couldn't see it because my head was down. And he says, um, this is your panic button. So if any point in time you feel like you're getting claustrophobic or you feel like you can't handle it anymore, he goes, push the button, the machine will stop and we'll get you out. And they also put um, earplugs in my ears and the machine is loud. Even with the earplugs in, it startles you. So they proceed to putting me into the machine. Um, I'm Again, I'm not claustrophobic, so it wasn't bad for me. Um... I'm laying there and the first noise that the machine makes startles you because it's so loud. And it went from a vibrating sound to a clicking sound. Um, and then it was just like click, 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 and then like it, it, it's loud. So I'm sitting there and it's difficult because they tell you to remain still when you're in there and so I'm trying to control my breathing and just shallow breathe while the whole imaging is 40 minutes long for me. That's a long time to do shallow breathing so there was times where I felt like I had to breathe deep to keep myself from panicking. Um, so whenever I would hear the clicking stop because there's a couple times where there's like no noise, I would Breathe in deep real quick and then breathe out deep. Um, it took 40 minutes. The last 10 minutes of the imaging, um, they inserted the contrast. Now, they tell you there are no side effects of the contrast, which they're right. I didn't experience any side effects from the contrast. However, <laughs> when they inserted the contrast, you feel this cold sensation. I got a weird taste in my mouth. Um, I can't really describe. It was just kind of like a... I don't know it, it was just a weird taste in my mouth so that was weird so 
I noticed a lot of people not mentioning that and maybe it was just me the way I experienced it but that is what I experienced so I get done with the MRI the last 10 minutes they insert the contrast I get done they pull me out and it's funny because I'm laughing hysterically as they're pulling me out of this machine and the nurse is like okay I have to ask why are you laughing and I'm like because I know the moment I raise my head I'm gonna have toilet seat face and she just started busting up laughing because the cushion that your head is on like goes like this and it looks like a toilet seat and I knew because I'm laying face down for 40 minutes that I was gonna have this ring around my face luckily I didn't but it was still funny so I get done with that um, the nurse tells me you know go ahead and change back into your clothes I change back into my clothes and they say okay you're done um, I go out to the waiting room to get my mom and my kids and my mom just looks guilty and I'm thinking, oh God, what did you do? And she proceeds to get out her phone and she shows me these two videos. Yes, videos. Um, she got a video of me um, getting my IV port put in. And when the doctor walked by, he looked at her and he said, ma'am, you cannot record back here. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll put it away, I'll put it away. Mind you, I said there was two videos. So she pulls up the second video and she took her camera and zoomed in on the screen, the monitor, that was showing my images as I was getting them done. Well, the wa doctor walked by and he goes, ma'am, please do not make me tell you again. You need to turn that off. She's persistent, gotta give her that. but. You know, and I appreciate what she did because she wanted to get documentation, you know, ex for my YouTubers um, so that they were able to kind of experience it with me. Um, she hasn't emailed me the videos yet, but I'll put those in a later video so you guys can see those. Um, so yeah, she got in trouble. Leave it to my mom to get in trouble. So we leave um, the MRI area and we head up front and I, at this point, I'm like in the zone. I want to get out of there. I was just laying down for 40 minutes. It sucked. I want to leave. I want to go have lunch. I turn around. My mom's not there. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I go back inside and she requested, which was smart. She requested the DVD of all of my images. And if I can give anybody going through this process any word of advice, it would be to get all of your images that you can. And they'll give you a DVD. I think your first one's free, and then if you lose it and you have to come get another one, they charge you for it. But mammogram, ultrasound, MRI, get your images. Get a copy of your images for your own records. Um, and two, if you want to go for a second opinion anywhere, you already have those images available and you can provide those to your doctor. So my doctor calls me the very next day and she said, okay, we have an appointment set up for you for July 2nd. So my MRI was June 26th and they set up an appointment for me for July 2nd so that I could go back in and get all of my results from my lab work, from my MRI, all of it. Uh, July 2nd rolls around, it was 8.30 in the morning and I go to my doctor's office. Now, my doctor is out of town so I end up seeing a different doctor who knows nothing about me bless her little heart she was only going based off of notes in my file basically so um, I get there and I go back and I'm waiting for like 45 minutes for this doctor and she comes in and she's like okay I have your lab results but I do not have your MRI results back yet um, I will send them an email right now, I will request those, and I will call you later with those results. And I'm like, okay, that works. As long as I don't gotta drive all the way back here, just call me with my results. So she goes over my lab results with me, and for those of you that don't know, I have a hereditary blood disorder. It's called hereditary spherocytosis. Basically, my red blood cells don't look like normal red blood cells. They don't carry the right amount of oxygen through my body. Um, I had to have my spleen removed because of it. Um, I was, you know, jaundice, and it was basically my spleen was growing little spleens, and it was like killing off my white blood cells. I was getting sick all the time. 
So yeah, um, what that means is I don't have a baseline for blood work. My white blood cells are always elevated. My red blood cells are always low. It's, I struggle a lot with being anemic. I don't have any real baseline for the doctors to go off of for these lab results because she proceeds to tell me that my white blood cell counts elevated, which is expected. It is on every single one of my lab results. That my cholesterol is high, but everything else looks fine. And, and she asked me, she said, do you have or have you gotten blood work done anywhere else before so I can compare this to, um, I need a baseline to compare it to. And I said, Yes, I have. However, comma, my lab results are never normal because of this blood disorder. And she's like, okay, well, we need to send you to a blood specialist or a hematologist that can examine your blood work um, basically and compare it because they know what to look for in somebody who has hereditary spherocytosis. And I'm like, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Like, I'm seriously, at this point, I'm, you know, four appointments in. I'm a month and a half with the same symptoms in. I'm just like, I need to figure out what's going on. My mind's going crazy. I don't know what to expect. I'm thinking the worst case scenario for everything, you know. And at this point, I think it's okay for somebody to feel a little bit crazy. Like, you don't know what to expect. So... I felt crazy. I go home from that appointment. She gives me my lab results and I go home. Five o'clock that afternoon, same afternoon, July 2nd at five o'clock, she calls me and she said, okay, I have your MRI results and this is what's going on. The lump that you were originally seen for, um, isn't as concerning as the other things that we have found. They found two nodules in my left breast and one nodule in my right breast. And a nodule is different from a lump. I, I'm not sure, she didn't explain to me how they were different, she just said a nodule is different from a lump. And I'm guessing that it, the thing that makes them different is the, what created them. That's the only thing I can think of. I do know, however, that a nodule is not good. So immediately, I'm panicking. I'm like, oh my gosh, it has spread. It has spread. What am I going to do? What is my next step? Right? So I, I, asked, I asked her. I said, okay, so what do I do now? She says um, that they have to send me to the hematologist um, and that the hematologist is going to call me to make an appointment. And I said, okay. And they will examine my blood results because typically if you have cancer, any form of cancer, it's going to show up on your lab work, your blood work. Um, and then she said, we also have to schedule you for a bilateral mammogram and a bilateral ultrasound so at this point I'm thinking okay so my first lab result was a waste of time my first mammogram was a waste of time because remember they only did it on my right breast and my first ultrasound was a waste of time because they only did it on my right breast I have to go back in for more lab work or blood work and I have to have a bilateral mammogram, which this time they're bilateral again, meaning both. They are doing a mammogram of both breasts, left and right. And that I have to have a bilateral ultrasound. So they're going to ultrasound my entire left breast and my entire right breast. Okay. Thankfully, I've got really good insurance. I have Aetna is my provider, prim my primary, and then I have another secondary insurance. And then, you know, so at this point I haven't had to pay anything out of pocket as of yet. But 
it is now a waiting game. Um, today is July 16th, 2015, and probably about four days ago, I got a call from the hematologist. Now, when I got this phone call, I had another mini panic attack because I answered the phone, I'm like, hello? And she's like, this is so-and-so from Cancer Treatment Services of Arizona. Seriously? Cancer Treatment Services of Arizona is where they chose for me to go to see a blood specialist. I had a mini panic attack when I heard the word cancer. And I said, okay, listen, is this only for blood work? And she said, yes. She goes, don't let the title you know, scare you. This is just for blood work. So I'm like, okay, so I scheduled it there. That is scheduled for July 20th. And then I am scheduled July 23rd for my bilateral mammogram and ultrasound. My birthday's on July 24th. I'm really hoping that on July 23rd, I know either way. Whether it is nothing to worry about and I move on and get to experience life like a regular human being or whether they say we need to biopsy, which I'm fully expecting because one, my insurance is not gonna pay for another MRI, and two, I'm not gonna need another mammogram or ultrasound. So the next step would be to biopsy the lump or the, the nodules, one of the two. I don't know which one they're more concerned about. And at this point, I don't know if they're concerned about any of them because they haven't said anything. And I understand legally they can't really tell me one way or the other definitively until they get the results back, but it is still the worst thing in the world to have to wait and not know where, even if they're leaning towards one or the other, I keep hearing, you'll be fine, don't worry about it. You'll be fine, don't worry about it. You'll be fine, but we need an MRI. You'll be fine, but we found nodules. You'll be fine, but this. I will not know whether or not I will be fine until July 23rd. So from the beginning of May until July 23rd, I will have experienced almost every single emotion there is possible to experience. I've been angry, I've been sad, I've been worried, I've panicked, I've been happy, I've been hopeful, I've been, you know, everything that you can possibly imagine, I have experienced that emotion. And you know, I haven't told any of my family yet that I'm going through this besides my mother and then obviously my husband. Um, because why have my family worry if it's nothing? It's frustrating because, you know, ba basically I want everyone out there who's going through the pre-diagnosis stage to understand it's okay to be pissed off. It's okay to be sad. It is okay to expect the worst case scenario because I'm telling you right now, if you don't, you're not preparing yourself. It may come out, come back to be nothing. And that's great news. That's what we all hope for. But if you allow yourself to experience all these emotions, when you find out either way, if you find out it's nothing, and you've already experienced all these emotions, you will be ecstatic, ecstatic. If you allow yourself to feel all of these emotions, sadness, anger, hope, and you find out it's the worst case scenario, you've already grieved through the emotional process of not knowing. You've already been angry. I'm not going to say it's not going to be scary and that you're still not going to cry because I imagine you probably would, but you've already been through that anger and that sadness. And if you find out worst case scenario, you can move on and say, okay, what's the next step? Let's beat this shit. Let's get cancer out of me. What is the next step? And I don't know. I, I, do I have cancer? I don't know. Do I not? I don't know. I had these symptoms. I treated them symptomatically. 
which led to my self breast exam, which found the lump. So do not ignore anything that your body is trying to tell you. You know your body best. Don't let somebody else tell you, oh, that lump's normal. It's not. You know if it is or if it isn't. And you'll know. Your body will tell you, hey, there's something wrong, go get checked. I think the body is the most amazing thing that God ever created. And I also hope that this video will inform, educate everybody who is watching to do self-breast exams. Whether you're male or whether you're female, does not matter. Do them because they will save your life. And sometimes they may be benign, just cis, non-cancerous. So I hope this helped you guys. I love you. I'm sorry I haven't done any videos here recently, but this is what I've been going through. Um, I need your prayers. I need hopeful prayers. I will talk to you guys later. I will do another video on June 20th and June 23rd of my lab results and my mammogram and ultrasound bilateral.